When you want to animate a character, you essentially need two things. The first is a mesh object for visuals and for rendering purposes. This is what defines your character as your eyes perceive it. The second requirement is a skeleton that drives the mesh. This in fact is what you need to animate. The mesh itself can be built in a variety of ways and requires knowledge of modeling and texturing. This will not be covered here as this movie set is about animation. The creation of a skeleton, however, is what concerns us at this time. There are essentially three skeleton systems you can use in 3ds Max. Max Bones, Biped, and Cat. In this movie, you'll learn the workflow in using Max Bones to build a skeleton that can be animated in Motion Builder. You will learn about Biped and Cat skeletons in later movies. This scene, named Mia Bones, that you downloaded for this tutorial shows a girl in a T-stance pose and facing the minus Y axis. These are important requirements to go from 3ds Max to Motion Builder. A bone skeleton was created to match the anatomy of this girl named Mia. The bone skeleton was created using the Max Bones tool found in the Systems panel. Bone structures were then created for the various limbs. Using the Bone Tools floater, fins were adjusted to help with the skinning and colors were changed to help with the visuals. Next, limb names were renamed from the generic Bone001, Bone002 to a naming convention that Motion Builder can understand. This naming convention is very important to follow if you wish to streamline the interoperability with Motion Builder. If you watched the first movie in this series, you would have noticed how easy it was to rig or characterize a skeleton in Motion Builder. This was easy only because the skeleton was named according to the naming convention recognized by Motion Builder. If you need to export multiple characters and multiple skeletons, you can give the skeleton's bones a prefix. Select the objects that make up the skeleton, all bones and the helper for the pelvis, and choose the Rename Objects tool from the Tools menu. Ensure only the Prefix option is enabled and enter a prefix name followed by a colon. The colon is a separator. Internally, Motion Builder is just reading the bone names that come after the colon while the prefix prevents name duplication. Click Rename to rename the skeleton limbs. If you were building this skeleton to animate this character in 3ds Max, you'd need to rig it. At this time, although there is a hierarchy in the bone system, there are no constraints to make the skeleton behave properly. Rigging a fully articulated bone skeleton in 3ds Max is no easy task. It usually requires the addition of IK solvers, 2D manipulators, and other scripts and expressions. However, if your purpose is to animate the character using Motion Builder, then you do not need to worry about any rigging process in 3ds Max. You do need to skin your mesh to a skeleton though. Select the mesh and apply a skin modifier. Add all of the skeleton elements as skin bones. Normally, you would want to fine-tune the skin, but we won't worry about that for now. Simply export the file to disk, choosing the default FBX option. Choose an export folder and give your file the name Mia Bones. In the dialog that appears, you can choose what information to store in your FBX file. For this scene, the only option you need to ensure is checked is the Embed Media option. This ensures the texture applied to the Mia mesh is included in the FBX file. Click OK to save the FBX file. Start Motion Builder and open the file you just saved to disk. With the cursor over the viewer, press Ctrl A until the viewer is in X-ray mode. From the Asset Browser, under Templates Characters, drag the character icon to one of the skeleton bones in the viewer. Choose Characterize, Biped to rig your character. The process is easy enough as you can see, but only because you properly named your bones in 3ds Max. At this point, you can enable the control rig in full FKIK mode to animate your character. You can also retarget Mia onto an existing motion capture file. 
From the Tutorials folder, drag the punch file into the viewer. Merge the punch sequence into the current scene. A new yellow skeleton appears in the scene and is already animated to throw a punch. In the Character Controls window, under Edit, switch from Control Rig Input to Punch Guy Input. Now Mia is animated to throw a punch. Of course the idea is to take that information back to 3ds Max for rendering purposes. However, at this time, Mia's animation is dependent on the motion capture file you added to the motion builder scene. In order to export back the information to 3ds Max, you first need to bake Mia's animation to the skeleton. The information has to be baked in forward kinematics mode, mostly as rotational information. The process of baking the information is called plot in Motion Builder terminology. This is done by choosing Edit, Plot Character. Plot the animation to the skeleton in order to export it back to 3ds Max. Accept the default parameters, they work well in most situations. If you wish, you can save me as animation separately instead of saving the full scene which also includes the motion capture file and its own skeleton. This is done by choosing File, Save Character Animation. Give your new file a name, for example Mia Bones Animated. Back in 3ds Max, where we left Mia in a T-stance pose, Choose File Import, navigate to where you save the animated file and select it. In the File Content drop-down menu, make sure the Update Scene Elements option is selected. This ensures it only updates the animated state of objects that have the same name, in this case all skeleton elements. Click OK to import the animation and watch it unfold. As mentioned before, there is need for a bit of refinement at the skin level, but we'll accept that for now. If you need to make further adjustments to the animation, then you'd best do that in Motion Builder again. Even after you've plotted the animation to the skeleton in FK mode, you can plot the animation back to a control rig for further refinement. This is done by choosing Edit, Plot Character, Control Rig. You can then use a new animation layer to offset or fine-tune the motion capture clip already on the skeleton. For example, by offsetting the position of the hands and keyframing these by pressing the K shortcut. Once satisfied, you plot the final animation again to the skeleton and reload it in 3ds Max as shown earlier. As you can see, the process of exporting Max Bones to Motion Builder and back is easy provided you use the right naming convention for your skeleton. In the next movie, you look at a different scenario where the skeleton is based on a biped skeleton instead of a Max Bones skeleton.